Okay, I want to tell you here from the top that it's pretty unbelievable the transformation that happens at the end. Like looking at her right now, if I were to tell you that I had her eating treats out of my hands, you wouldn't believe me. But I, I don't want to spoil it. I guess I just say all of this because there are some moments where it's just pretty hard to see her because she's just so shut down. But just stick with me on this one. I promise the transformation is worth it. Hi, I'm just going to set this right here, okay? It's okay. It's okay. There's nowhere, nowhere to go. You're safe. You are safe. Huh. It always hurts so bad when you see them at a point where they're still trying to melt away and they have nowhere left to go. Mm-hmm. The challenge is in a lot of shelters, this really is or can be the end of the line. So they have the right to be scared. Right now, right here, we're safe. But trying to tell them that And let them know that that's the challenge. And most shelters don't have the time, the resources, the money, the energy to be able to do that with each dog. Because you can't just walk by the kennel and say, it's going to be okay. And expect that they will just snap out of it and leave that fear state. You know, fear can do the wildest things to us. And especially elongated amounts of fear. Uh, fear starts in your brain in the amygdala and it goes all the way down to your adrenaline glands that sit right above your kidneys since the beginning of time this has been wired into us dogs animals or it works a little bit differently for animals but very similar and it creates that fight or flight response if and ever is released through your body or adrenaline your muscles tense your blood goes away from your heart into your limbs and you're sent into this state of fight or flight. But there's a third response, and that's freeze. And it doesn't have to be an immense amount of fear. The reason when you look at this dog, you feel it so much in your heart and your soul, and you want to do whatever you can to help that dog is because you know this feeling. Stress does the same thing. It elicits the same response. And a prolonged amount of that is so harmful to the body visually it's hard to see over time and yourself but when you see it in a dog in this state in this extreme fear for a prolonged amount of time you know it when you see it and you can feel it because you've experienced it i'm gonna go ahead and sit down typically i would start with a treat but this dog isn't going to move from that spot right there and i want to get as low as i can This might be one of the worst situations that that I've ever seen, at least in recent years. When you're in this state right here, and you're in that complete shutdown mode, it's almost like the body does it as a coping mechanism because she's not feeling anything right now. Nothing is processing. In this state, if you were to be able to ask her in the future what it was like, is likely she won't remember most of it time freezes or or flies by there really is no sense of time because your body goes into kind of a shutdown almost protective mode you know when when fear continues to run through your body your immune system slows down is where you might lose your appetite your heart rate increases and heart rate at an elevated level for a prolonged amount of time can do some major damage And if you notice, when I first saw her, her eyes were still active, but her body wasn't being allowed to be active. The eyes were darting around trying to process everything, trying to take it all in. But her body couldn't interpret that data and do anything with it. The good news is we're here and we can help. And that's what sitting with dogs is all about. We're going to find out her story here in a minute. And I, you know, I don't, I don't know what we're going to find, but. It's almost like you have the whole story here. It doesn't matter. Whatever got her to this point is traumatic and so extreme that she can't even function. And that's why we're here now. One of the hardest parts about being in a prolonged period of stress or fear is isolation. One of the ways to get your brain to stop sending messages to your adrenaline glands is companionship other people which is really hard because a lot of times 
you can't reach out for help or you don't want to reach out for help. But we've got to figure out how to try and break those signals coming from her brain and not tell her, well, we'll also tell her, but show her or him, her, pink collar, I think, that it's going to be okay, that we've got her, that she is safe, not only in this environment, although it may be unknown, which can be scary, but because... I am here for her. I am going to make sure that she is safe from here on out. But it is really hard to see. It's hard to look at. That, this is the part where it starts to hurt and, I, and you shake it off because in your head you replace this image with images of her pretty white coat just hanging out with you on the couch or going for walks and blowing in the wind. Her looking like that model dog that we all know that she can be. If you are a true dog lover, you know what's inside and that she can be so much more if she's just given the opportunity to love and to be loved in return. And that makes me really happy that she's going to get to that point and we're going to make that happen. All right, I think you'll be surprised at what we can achieve in just sitting with her. That We will work to change this. And I, you know what, I always say there's no goal, but I think that's incorrect. There, I guess what I mean to say is whatever progress the dog makes along the way, that's okay. And if they're not ready to make any progress, that's okay too. But I think, I think we can help. This is what we do. And it's a testament to how amazing dogs are because they're willing to trust and love again. So let's, let's start. I've got some ideas. Now, typically we'll start with a treat. And I don't think she's in any state to take a treat. But, um, oh, and I also, I'm going to break all the rules. I say I don't like to take things away from dogs. She has no attachment to this thing right here. And it's just causing her stress. I'm going to move that away. It's cute. They gave her a toy to give her some comfort. But we are going to try and entice her nose a little bit. It's always a push and a pull when you're introducing additional stress like that. I'm, I'm putting that right on her nose and right on her tongue to try to just almost shock her system out of the state that she's in. And she probably doesn't like it. Like it's, it's not like she's like, oh, that's really comfortable. I like that. But we've got to do something here to get her out of this state. Okay, that's step number one. I'm just going to leave it right there. Almost in, in a little bit of an annoying way so that she has to deal with it a little bit. Now, why do we do why do we do this? One, to get her out of a state of not being in this fear because it just does damage to the body. But two, we've got to get her out of this state so that she has an opportunity to be adopted. Now, would I love for every family, every adopter that comes in here to understand that this is not who this dog is and say, I'll adopt this dog, I'll take a chance on that dog? Absolutely. But that's just not the way it works, unfortunately, statistically, numbers-wise. If the dog's not coming up to the front of the crate to say hello, to say, I like humans, are you bringing me a treat? Uh, let's, let's interact. They're just not going to get adopted. She hasn't moved, has she? Okay. Um, I'll take that away. It's okay. It's okay. 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 Number two, and we're going we're gonna to find out her story here in a minute. Um, I usually do this a little bit later, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try something where I'm going to introduce some touch. Touch helps. Again, stress. And, and, and by the way, I'm no doctor. I might have all this wrong, but this, this is how I interpret it. It's what I know. It tightens your muscles. What's really interesting is it tightens kind of the external portion is why you get the chills and your hair stands straight up. So if we can apply some touch to just change that a little bit, to work through that blood flow, it makes a big difference. Important note, the line on her back right here, that is flea and tick medication. That is not her hair standing up. If that was her hair standing up, I would be more cautious because that would be a warning sign to stay away from me. I'm not ready for this. That is just flea and tick medication. Or she's part Ridgeback, and I don't think that's the case. <laughs> When we first started the video, you might have seen red marks too. I see it on her tail. Could be an injury. More likely, she's in heat. <laughs> We're going to try some touch. Little bits at first, so I can try to read any body language. 
me use my phone to see if I make sure there's no curling of the jowl on the lips here. Another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into positive affirmations right now. We'll do a little bit later if, when we get her out of this state. But I want to change my vocal tones to, to just to, I want to give her every signal to try and see if we can break her out of this state. And then we're going to get her story. Hi. Hi. Hi, Mama. Hi. Oh, does that feel good a little bit? You release a little tension there. It's really cute when like, even though their their brain is fighting against it, their body feels so good on their body they can't handle it. She's like, <laughs> her legs are like uncurling a little bit. She's like, I'm not going to admit it. My brain's not going to let me, but that feels good. Hi. Hi. Oh, man. That, that tells me right there, likely poor nutrition, poor shape. Um, Alexis, I don't see you, but are you around the corner? Yeah, right here. Hey, uh, uh, Alexis is helping keep some of the other dogs quiet because if we can give her some peace, I think that'll help a lot. One of the reasons her eyes were darting around so much at the beginning is because the dogs were barking. Every time a dog would bark, it would just send her into that state. So, uh, uh, Alexis, sorry. So, um, can you, uh, do you have your phone with you? Uh, yes. Can you message our, our Sundays for Dogs rep and see if they're willing to do food for a year for her? Yeah, of course. I'll, uh, I'll see what they can do. Okay. They're usually pretty quick res with responding, so just let me know. Uh, when they respond, I mean, she looks like she really needs some proper nutrition just to even help her, you know, within the first couple weeks here. Okay, so uh, Sundays for Dogs is the sponsor. They sponsor us. They're going to sponsor us uh, if we get them to say yes. <laughs> and, th and they will feed her for a year. Whoever adopts her will get free dog food for a year. And it's amazing. We've had tremendous results with it because it's air dried. It's real food developed by a veterinarian she put her whole heart and soul and all of her knowledge into developing this food and we've seen firsthand what an awesome effect it's made on our dog and i just wanted to thank sundays for dogs for sponsoring this video i'll put the link on the screen they're going to get 50 percent off and i'll fill you in on it more later you can see her tense up every time i touch her but i'm just kind of going back and forth push and pull to try to show some of that love and that comfort and just give her touch and get that blood flow moving versus that continuous state of just kind of goosebumps. Let's get her story. And then I've got, I've got something else I want to try that, um, that might help. Alexis, um, have you had a chance to kind of see what what info we have on her and what her story is? Yes. Okay. What, uh, girl, right? Yeah, she is a female. Um, I think she's, yeah, I think she's in heat too. Yeah, you would be correct. She is not sterilized. So currently they have that note that she's in heat. Okay. Um, microchip? No microchip, Didn't. but we do know that she belonged to somebody. Okay. And we don't, but we don't have a collar or a leash, huh? Not as far as I'm concerned, no. I look up there because if there's a little bucket and if they come in with a collar or a leash, it'll be up at the top in that bucket. It's really helpful because if someone's looking for their dog or it's just any identification we can get goes a long way. <laughs> Hi, you want to come out a little bit? Hey, you know what? Can I hand you this water bowl? Because I want to try to scoot back a little bit and just get in a better position to show her some love. We, we take the water bowls out when we're sitting with them because if they panic, I've had this happen multiple times, they, you know, flips the water bowl, splashes, then it just induces more panic. So I'm going to try to come back here a little bit. I don't think any of this will matter to her, but typically with a dog, we'd, we'd kind of move to that next step where I think, oh, she's a late. She's laying in pee over here too. It's so hard when they're so scared that they won't even move out of P. Hi. Okay, so I'm a little scared to ask, but okay, so no microchip, no, no collar, but how do we know, how do we have info? info? Well, over the weekend, um, she uh, was actually in a turn-in. Oh. 
So apparently, just going based off of the little info we have right now, she was likely waiting outside of the apartment complex or something in the office that uh, she came from with her owner. Okay. And the owner had called animal control to come and pick her up. And the only reason given was uh, there was hardship. But like, uh, like financial hardship? We don't know. All that was in the notes were hard, it, there was hardship. I would ask the animal control officer that picked her up how it was, the conversation was with them, but they're out on the field right now. I mean, it, it seems like prolonged hardship too, because she's shedding, she's dirty, you know, she hasn't been spayed, she wasn't microchipped. And we're seeing this more and more where, where inflation is just caused, you know, prices keep going up. And then when someone has a couple hundred dollars for the month, the choice is, do they feed themselves or do they feed their dog? Do they go get them microchip? Do they get them spayed if they can't afford it? And if there aren't enough low cost spay and neuter clinics or they don't know about them, then they don't get spay or neutered either. And I struggle with what to do because I want to find who those people were. I want to reach out. I want to try to help them see if we can uh, get food to them, if we can uh, help with spay and neuter costs. Like what can we do to help cost wise? But I will tell you that animal control does that and the shelter does that. And they try to help find programs to help the individual with their dog. And so a lot of times what happens is the animal control officer assesses that at the time, this dog is not in the best situation that they should be in and that they need to pull them into the shelter to get them into a safer spot. Not always the case. There are a lot of situations and a lot of variables to go into this, but you know, a lot of times people say like, well, the dog is better off now than with the person before. It's sometimes that's not the case. Sometimes someone generally, genuinely is struggling and doesn't has no option left and they don't know what to do and they feel that their dog would be better in this situation but there are programs out there there is help out there and so sometimes it's they just don't want the dog i guess for this situation you know i ask you what what do you think do you think this was the right thing and it's good this dog is here or you know because you wouldn't leave your dog even if you had to be homeless and they were eating before you or that no this is okay because the People need help and, and it's hard right now out there and they don't, they couldn't care for their dog. What is going through her head right now is that she has been abandoned and there's no hope and she doesn't know what this new situation is and fear has shut her down. She has no one to guide her or lead her, but we're going to help. That's the good news. Something I want to try. What do you have? Some, any, wait, anything else on that story? That's it, huh? Unfortunately, that's all we know. It, it is a little interesting because a lot of times people will bring the dog into the shelter. So, uh, but it could have been an elderly person that couldn't get dogs into the car or I don't know. It's really challenging because there are so many possibilities when an animal control officer is called to a location to pick up a dog versus the owner themselves coming in with the dog. So these are just, you know, random possibilities, but it could have been a noise complaint and it was the last straw, which is why they got called over. Um, you know, it's not even clear if it was the owner themselves that called it in mm. and, you know, or if it's somebody else who had, you know, the unpaid complaint and the owner were like, you know what, we can't do this and give in their dog you know we don't know i've spent a lot of time with animal control going on animal control ride-alongs and it's anywhere sometimes from yes it's an elderly person and they have no option left and they can't bring the dog into the shelter because you know they're in a wheelchair disabled or they just don't have the strength to load the dog in the car but most of the time animal control has options they have uh, spay and neuter vouchers they they have a food bank they can get them food they're all these things all the way to the other side, the other leaning side, yeah, it could be a complaint. The owner, sometimes just animal control will show up and the owner will go, I don't care about this dog, take him. It would do me a favor if you got this dog out of my hair. And as hard as that is to hear as a dog owner, those people are out there. Either way, I'm glad we're here now with her so that we can help. And we're gonna do that and I'm gonna try something that will induce a little bit of stress, but I've gotta get her out of this corner. 
This corner is not doing her any favors. Let's try a couple key words to just see if we can break her out. I do have one bit of okay. information left. Yeah. I usually save the name for after the story's been told. Oh, we have a name? But she has a very sweet name and it's Princess. Princess. She, she likely does not feel very much like a princess right now. Let, let's try her name. I mean, let's try some keywords. So, Princess. Princess. You're a good girl, Princess. You're a good girl. Princess, you're a good girl. Yeah, you're a good girl, Princess. You're a good girl. Princess, do you want a treat? Do you want a treat, Princess? Princess. Hi, Princess. I mean, nothing. Like, nothing is... I don't know if she's just so shut down in a fear state or if she doesn't know that name. I think she doesn't know the name. Let me double check and see maybe if the old owner's names, maybe they were um, Spanish-speaking, maybe it's Princesa. I don't know. I think, I think we keep it. I think it's... I think it's who she can blossom into be. I think she is a princess and she should be treated that way. But um, she certainly doesn't know it. We're going to try the lead because we've got to break her out of this state. And and sometimes it can be a little little stressful. But I think it's worth um, some of the results I've seen from it. Because we just need some assistance here. Since we're not getting any sort of reaction. So we're going to try this. And just stick with me. Stick with me. Okay, 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 all right. We're gonna go loose. We don't. We don't want to go too tight because I want to give her the option to slide out of it if she needs. She, we're in a safe zone here. We're in the kennel, so it's not like she's in a dangerous zone. Okay. We're just going to do the two-finger tug here. Princess, you want to go for a walk? Princess, you want to go for a walk? Come on, girl. Come on. Come on. Princess, come on, girl. Come on, princess. Yeah, so nothing. Princess, come on, sweetie. You know what? I might actually move to the scoop. But she's not she's not reacting to this at all. She probably doesn't know what a walk is even. Uh, um I'm gonna can I get an that red blanket from you there? And I'm gonna see if I can scoop her and then just give her some love like by compression. Just be that that weighted blanket or that snug jacket. I would not always recommend this with a dog that's in a fear state, but she's based off just like, just looking at her. Oh yeah, she's. I think it's important enough to try and help her. Okay, come here. Come here. Okay. 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 It's okay, Mama. It's okay. 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 Yeah, she's about as stinky as they come. Okay. Okay. Mama. Okay. Okay, okay. Let's get you a beer. There you go. Let's scoop you in. Okay, that's okay. We're going to keep you over here. Okay, okay. There we go. There we go. Okay. Wow, she is strikingly gorgeous. I think Princess is the right name. Oh my goodness. So we're just going to... We're just going to kind of put some pressure on her in a good way. Just imagine... Having a hard day and someone just snugging you. Yeah, that's a good girl. Princess, you are a good girl. And no matter what you've been through, whether you've been loved and abandoned or never loved at all, it's not your fault. 
whatever happened that got you to this point, you don't deserve it because you are a good girl. And I can tell just by looking at you and being in your presence that you have so much love and you are such a loyal dog. Well, I can tell you would be there for someone through thick and thin if they would return the favor for you. And I promise you that we will find you that person. We will find you that family. Whatever it is that led you to this point, I am just so happy that we're together now because myself, the entire team, and and <laughs> you, probably, you don't understand this, but millions of people are now looking at you and falling in love with you too. And so it only gets better from here. You've gone through the hard part. Believe it or not, the hardest part is over. Oh my goodness, her heart, her heartbeat is like rapidly decelerating. It's really neat. And you can kind of see her eyes just relax a little bit. Remember before you had those really darty eyes and now that she can just relax them a little bit. Uh, when, oh, when did she come in, Alexis? She came in over the weekend, actually, the last day of August. So, okay, so today's the second. So she's been here for 48 hours? Or the, this side. Or today's the third, yeah. Today is her third day. So today's the third day. Likely hasn't slept a wink. Uh. Hi. Hey, we're, we're trying to help make this dog better. She's in a real fear state. Can you tell her she's a good girl? She's in a what? She's like a fear state. She's just shut down. Her name's Princess. 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 We're watching Princess. Yeah. Yeah, we're just, we're going to try to get her adopted and we're highlighting her. And so uh, we're just trying to tell her she's a good girl. You no? Know? She's pretty. She's really pretty, huh? What kind of dog is she? I don't, a shepherd of some sort, just so white. This is husky right now. Yeah, maybe a husky shepherd mix. Pretty. pretty eyes, huh? You hear that, Princess? You're pretty. Same color? Are there two different they're, No, same color. Oh. Yeah. Oh. You're a good girl. Oh. You're a good girl. Oh, I have something we can try now. You want a treat? You want a treat? You want a little treat? Here. Yeah, I'll break it up. You want that? A little bit? Here, I'll put it right there. Want that? Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. That is, you are amazing. Thank you for trusting me enough to take that treat. Oh, my goodness. It's so huge. I'm like trying to be so cool because... She's going to feel my heart rate getting excited and she's going to send her right back into that excitement state. <laughs> but I, the reason it's such a big deal is her nose and her taste buds are working. You want the whole thing? Her nose and her taste buds are working. And when that, when that happens, when those things start working, it means that her mind is in a different state. The amygdala is no longer able to send fear state to the adrenaline glands because and now her nose is working. She's sniffing things. Her appetite is allowed to start kicking back up. And look at that. It's just like she's got some comfort now. Her heart rate is decelerated. I'm always careful when I move a dog into the scoop because I never want to force it. But sometimes you almost have to just a little bit to help break that state of fear. And that's what we were doing in this state. A little paw moving. You just have a little paw. Yeah, you're so cute. Here. Okay. Yeah. You want another treat? Yeah, I'm going to set it right here. I'm going to set it on your paw. There, look. you got a treat on your paw, girlfriend. What? There you go, princess. The only way you should be served treats is on your paw, right? <laughs> you can grab it. Here. There you go. <laughs> I just imagine her eating healthy food having a healthy coat, you know, and that, and, and healthy food too will also help because who knows what she's been eating. She's likely not be getting enough nutrition or the proper nutrition. And so it, if she gets that, it will also just help her brain process things better. Is that, uh, Alexis is signaling to me, uh, per, uh, good segue. Yes. Uh, <laughs> the, what is it? I was going to say actually, uh, Sundays, uh, got back to me. Uh, and yes? Yeah, of if, course. Yeah, they're on board. <laughs> they make for a really bad video if they're like, they said no. <laughs> no, they're on board. 
Okay. Okay. That'll be really great. Uh, Sundays for dogs. Thank you for being such an awesome partner. Like this makes such a big difference because it's going to set her on the right path to proper nutrition, which is just going to help her process better when you're healthy and you're feeling good and you don't have either mal malnourishment or the wrong kind of food running through your body. You just can process things better. It's funny how she keeps looking at the big stick like she's going to, like she'll take that whole thing. She went to little treats, right? Here you go. Sundays for dogs. Go buy it. It is amazing food. You will see your dog do the happy tippy tappy dance now every time you go to feed them. Not to mention, nowhere else can you find 50% off to try their food. They've done that for us because of the amazing works we're doing at the shelter and how they believe in helping rescue dogs. Wow. Look at this. Look at that. Look at that smile. Okay, it's not really a smile. What it is, is it's a relaxation of the jaw. So before everything was tense like this, I'm scared. Now we can relax a little bit because the nose is working, the taste buds are working. And this is the first time I've seen her breathing. It's still an anxiety state. Don't get me wrong. Like she's not 100% here by any means, but we've gone from complete shutdown to now being able to process some things. I think before I work with dogs, if I was ever in these states, I didn't know how to get out of them because you didn't know, like you knew what was happening, but you couldn't articulate it. And thus you couldn't move to the next step. And I would just say, if you're struggling with anything like stress or fear, if you can get to spending time with dogs, even your dog, or if you can get to a shelter to volunteer, not only do you get out of your own head, but that companionship with another being it is life changing. It is life saving. And if you've been thinking about doing this or you've been, there's been a void in your life and you've been looking for something to help fill that void, I promise you it's dogs or cats or bunny rabbits, but it's at the shelter. It's there for you. And whether you're going to adopt a dog or foster or volunteer, the answer is there for you. And if you've kind of been walking through life going, I'm a weirdo, right? Because I love dogs more than other people. If you've lost your dog and you're going, it hurts so bad. Why doesn't anyone understand? You're in the right place. You found your people. I'm your people. This community. It's why so many of you have joined to be members. It, and I would love to have you join to be a member because in that community, there are other people just like you that understand, that want to be in this community, in this group. So, so definitely join if it can. If not, just make sure you're subscribing. And, if, and the one thing I would ask them is share this because your share can lead to princess getting adopted. Hey, and she, because she's not going to need just any old person that goes, yeah, we'll give that dog a try. She's going to need someone that's willing to make the commitment to let her have months and months of just kind of decompressing, recalibrating learning that she's not going to be turned back in, that she is going to be safe. It's like every time, every time all that barking happens, it just sets her back another step. And so we've got to get her out of here quickly. We've got to get her out of here quickly. I can't believe we got to this state. We're not out of the woods yet. It's going to take a lot because, you know, when I leave, she could go right back into the state. And I see the comments all the time that people say, okay, noble thing you're doing, but is it really helping? And it does, but it, it often takes multiple times so that they know when a human comes by, this is good. Because all, all she knows to this point is, some, is a human will just abandon her. They, they aren't going to do her any good. So we've got to show her continued love. She's really dirty. It would be, it would be neat to see if Mel could work her wonders or Trent or someone, because I bet with a good groom, she would start to feel better and she would come out so bright white that people would be like, oh, I'll pay thousands of dollars for that designer dog. But guess what? You don't have to. You just got to pay the adoption fee. A lot of times you guys say, how, you know, how can we help? I want to help. Uh, I'll pay for the spade no matter what. If you want to be a part of that and you want to be a part of that community, joining to be a member is a great way to do it. Sometimes a lot of you will send super thanks. That's great. That all goes towards things like paying for the spay. There are multiple ways to help. Uh, getting my treats or coffee, all that goes, all that is folded back into helping more dogs. 
This, are you looking for a dog? This is Princess. I saw a Border Collie online that I was going to check out. It was like a black speckled, I haven't seen it yet, but okay. I'm looking just to see. Well, she's like in a shut down state, so we're trying to tell her she's a good girl. Can you tell her she's a good, her name's Princess. Can you tell her she's a good girl? Princess, you're a good girl. Oh, she felt that one. I, and you can see in her little eyebrows. Hi, princess. You're a good girl. Yeah, that's that's good. Thank you so much. It's like we're just trying to show all the love we can, you know. Thank you. Yeah. You know, it matters, right? Like the, that little eyebrow movement. It, it just seems so small, but it's so big. They tell us so much in their little, in their little movements and those little moments, and like that hits deep in our heart. So that in a, in a little bit when we're gone. And we're off getting the video ready to share with all of you. She's remembering that, and that's processing. See all that? See that processing happening? This is good. This is good. Oh God! What a, I am so lucky that this is my job. So lucky, and I, I'm so lucky to be a part of all of this with you. Like you watching this and sh and being a part of it. It's so awesome. I just am right now extremely grateful. Like I'm exuding gratitude right now for all of you i don't want to leave <laughs> i just there, there are more dogs we need to highlight but i don't i definitely don't want to leave right now i know i shared all that uh fear stuff at the beginning but like i've been thinking about that a lot because i think maybe it's too much information maybe you're like yeah well duh we know how fear works rocky i don't know you guys tell me but i i think thinking through the steps and the processes and understanding how it works is is what helps us <sighs> come out of that state or, or be in it while it's happening and understanding it so that you can you can work to change it or understand or process it at a later date you're a good girl princess you're a good girl look i love you it's gonna be okay from here okay let's go see if we can get her set up for its spay get the payment going talk to the groomer We'll start being an advocate for her and seeing what we can do. Okay, princess, you're about to get the royal treatment, my gal. Good girl. Good girl, princess. Yeah, yeah, her eating is so good, too, because she, she's likely not even eating any food. And an update, they were able to pair her up with another dog to try to give her some companionship. Glenn Massey, who you see here, a local trainer, he volunteers a lot of his time at the shelter to help these dogs. He's taking her out and starting to work with her. As you can see, even with everything he's trying, she's just so shut down. But she couldn't be in better hands than with Glenn, and he just takes the time to work through this with her. It's just really tiny incremental steps, and he had to carry her around a lot. But even, even that, it's just starting to let her know it's going to be okay. As hard as this is, we're going to get through this.